Hi, uh, hi. This is uh, John Doyle here from the ExcelCounts.com site, uh, and this is a short presentation to show how we can use Excel uh, and some tools from ExcelCounts.com uh, to help optimize uh, a floor grill design. So if I just take you over to the calculations, um, um, this is how we set out our calculations on the Excel Counts website. Uh, we're looking at this piece of equipment here. Uh, it's a floor grill and it stands on these pedestals here. And the idea is that we can blow air through the floor to keep these um, uh, PCs and uh, data control units uh, cool. So if I just take us a little bit further down, you can see that each one of these panels there is actually uh, sitting on uh, a pedestal, or sit sitting on uh, four pedestals, in fact, supported in each corner. Uh, the, uh, the floor panel itself is made from uh, a side frame, uh, and running between the side frame uh, are these cross rails here. Now, the way we have to think about uh, designing these is we think of a, a concentrated load that will sit on one of the cross rails, which will cause the cross rail to bend and then half the load goes into this side rail, a uh, side frame, and half the load goes into this side frame. And here's some uh, classical engineering formulae that we're going to use uh, to help us do that. Um, so going a little bit further down through the calculation, um, from the floor grill specification, we require this point load to be uh, 11,000 newtons. Uh, I've we're using aluminium, so I put in the uh, Young's modulus of aluminium there, and the grill dimension uh, is 600, and that's uh, this dimension here, 600 by 600 across there, so it's a 600 by 600 square. Now, this is the cross rail section, and here's the side frame section, and uh, you can see that this has been parameterized so that uh, we can set the section uh, properties to be any of these dimensions that we, we set here. Now I've downloaded from the excelcounts.com website uh, a nice little calculation that uh, produces um, uh, section properties basically. So if we go back to our uh, cross rail uh, using the dimensions of the cross rail uh, we can plot them out on here uh, and uh, we can calculate things like the area, we can calculate the, sec uh, the second moment of area, which is important for, it's an important property for when the uh, rail uh, bends. And I can also do exactly the same thing for um, the side frame. Now, these are all parameterized, so when I change these values here, then uh, the, uh, the sketch here changes uh, and also the section properties change. Uh, and if I just show you a little bit further down, uh, I'm just pulling out, there's, a, there's a, obviously a, a number of different aluminium um, specifications we use. I'm actually going to pick out this uh, 6,000, uh, 6,061 T6. So it's an allowable yield stress of 265. That's going to be important to us. But we're pulling uh, these uh, section property values from the uh, from the sheets that I've already shown you, and this is an important bending property, and this is also an important bending property. It's the distance of the of the neutral axis of the cross rail section uh, to the extreme fibre, and it's, it's important for this uh, when we calculate bending stresses. Uh, the area is important because uh, that's what we're going to use to calculate how much uh, mass uh, of the, the, the uh, cross rail will weigh. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these engineering formula here, these ones here, uh, to calculate a deflection. So that's that formula there, uh, and also using that moment later on to calculate a stress. So this is how we use those formulas. So this is we got the full load of uh, P uh, on a single span of cross rail, and we can calculate from that the deflection is going to be 6.3 millimeters. Uh, and we can also work out the stress in the cross rail uh, is going to be 370, and this is from the 
m times y upon i that's the classic uh, engineer's bending formula and uh, well we already noticed this demand to capacity ratio is 140 percent so as we've set up the problem so the allowable stress is 265 and we're above that by some margin we're 40 percent over so that's we get a demand to capacity rating there of 140 percent so clearly what we're looking at uh, in the first instance isn't going to work um, we also do a calculation here for the side frame. Remember that the side frame only carries half the load. Um, so again, we link through to the bending uh, section property uh, from the side frame worksheet, this one here. Uh, we've also got this distance from the neutral axis to extreme fiber. We also pulling through uh, the area of the section and we've got a very similar formulas now for working out deflection uh, the only thing you would notice is that we've only got half the load this time when we calculate deflection and we've only got uh, half the uh, load cal to calculate the moment uh, in the side frame but it's a, essentially the same calculation what we calculate here is that the uh, deflection of the side frame is considerably smaller than the uh, cross rail and uh, the stress is also considerably small. We have a demand to capacity ratio of 35. So we have a total deflection then, which would be the deflection of the rail plus the deflection of the, f uh, the frame, uh, given a deflection of 7.1. Uh, and our allowable is 2.5. So the demand to capacity ratio there is 2.86. Uh, and we can also calculate the approximate mass by uh, using uh, a value for density of aluminium. Uh, and so this is actually in tons, not, not an ideal unit, I guess, but um, uh, 0.006 is 6 kilograms. So it's 6.2 kilograms here. So that's another thing that we might want to optimize on. Uh, and that's explaining the calculation. Uh, and I think uh, that's enough to be thinking about for now. Uh, I'm going to make another uh, uh, presentation to show you how to optimize the section.